So for 21, we have to draw the curves and then find the area between them. Um, and it is from pi over 3 to negative pi over 3. So let's let's draw this out. Um, and I, I'll, I think that I'll draw it with quarters. So that is pi over 4 and pi over 2. Um, minus pi over 4, and then pi over 2, negative, yes. So first, let's draw our curve y is equal to 10x. Um, and 10x, it goes from 0. There is a, a vertical asymptote at pi over 2, and another vertical asymptote at negative pi over 2. So it begins... It begins growing kind of slowly until we get to pi over 4, which is equal to 1. So um, let me kind of put the... It should be around here, yes. And this should be pi over 4. Okay, so it goes something like goes downwards all the way till 1, right? It is concave upwards over here. And then from here, it grows on, it grows on infinitely upwards. And it'll never touch the, the asymptote over there. So for the other one, it will, on the other side, um, it'll do the same thing, except it will be concave downwards. So It'll start growing very slowly here and go all the way to negative one, right? And then from here, it'll keep going downwards forever. So this, this isn't the world's greatest drawing, but hopefully you guys, you guys can see um, what it looks like. And let, let us remember that pi over three is somewhere around here and here so we won't look at the whole interval now let's talk about uh two sine of x so this other function over here now it is just sine of x right but sine of x that has been stretched by two vertically because we're multiplying by two outside of the argument so this means that sine goes from zero to positive one to zero again and so on but now instead of going to positive one it'll go all the way to two so it would go somewhere over here so our curve would look something like this um, and same thing on the on the left hand side that it would go to negative two and then back to zero so it would look something like this and so yes, this is not the greatest drawing in the world, but hopefully you guys can see that um, the points of inter, the curve between them, the area between them is uh, this section over here and this section over here. Also, an interesting thing to notice is because uh, because we know that tangent is symmetric with respect to the um, to the y-axis. And also sine is symmetric with respect to the y-axis because they're both odd functions. This means that it's the area, it's just twice the area um, of from like zero to where, wherever the first um, point of intersection is. So what we're going to do is we're going to integrate it with respect to x because we want to do these vertical rectangles, right? Uh, these vertical rectangles, when we sum all of them, they will give us the area between the curve. So the, the vertical rectangle is represented by the width over here, which is dx. And that is just a small piece of the x-axis. You can see that it lines up. And this height is the upper function minus the lower function. So for the height over here, we would have uh, the upper function is the green one, so 2 sine of x um, minus tangent x minus tangent x yes um, now we do need to find where they intersect right this point over here 
so that we can set our boundaries. And as I've said, we're only going to consider the area in the positive side because then we're going to double it since they are the same. Um, so to find this point of intersection, we do need to set the curves equal to each other. So we'll go um, 2 sine of x, right, is equal to um, is equal to tangent x. So how can we how can we do this? Um, I'm gonna bring everything over to the left hand side, and then I'm gonna set tan as a function of sine and x. So I'm gonna do two sine of x, and then minus tangent of x. But instead of tangent, I'm just gonna write sine of x over cosine of x, and then set this equal to zero. Um, so now all I have to do is factor out the sine. So sine of x times two minus one over cosine of x is equal to zero. Um, so we either, the answers are either when sine of x is equal to zero or when two is equal to one over cosine of x, right? Uh, and if we just cross multiply this, this would be um, cosine of x is equal to one half. So actually we do have a number of solutions, right? Um, because they intersect, they intersect at multiple places. They do intersect at this upper point, this one in the middle over here, and this lower point. So the lower point is where sine of x is equal to zero, right? That's just zero. So we do have one of our boundaries. So let's put that in. This is the boundary at zero. Um, what about the upper boundary? It is when cosine x is equal to one half. Um, cosine x is equal to one half when, let me write this down, and, and this is true when x is equal to pi over three or negative pi over three. Um, we are only going to consider the upper interval because we're doing twice the area. So we're gonna say, pi over 3 here, and then we're going to multiply it by 2 outside of the integral. Now, I just want to recap this 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 3. Um, instead of going from the integral from negative pi over 3 to 0, plus the integral from 0 to pi over 3, because those two integrals have the same area, I'm just going to go 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 3. Um, okay, so once I have done this, let us clean this up a little bit. Now we are ready to set up our integral. So um, our upper function is the green one. So it is 2 sine of x, right? The integral of 2 sine of x. And then minus the lower function, which is minus tangent of x. And once more, I'm just going to express tangent as sine x over cosine x and all of this times dx which is the width of our rectangle um okay so what are we going to do now um what we can do here is we can break this down into two different integrals because that way it's just easier to integrate them so let me move all of this over to the left and just remove these boundaries. So this is the same thing as two times the integral from zero to pi over three of two sine x dx, and then minus two times the integral from zero to pi over three of sine of x dx over cosine of x. So for this first one, we just integrate it directly. The integral of sine is negative cosine. So this is equal to negative four 
times the cosine of x evaluated from 0 to pi over 3. Um, and what about this one? For the second integral, we are going to have to do a little u substitution. So u is equal to cosine x, du is equal to minus sine of x, dx. So we have du over negative 1 is equal to sine of x dx, x dx. So now we're ready to make our substitution, right? So this is, um, this is negative 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 3 times, uh, on the up we just have du, so minus du over u. Um, now we can just bring this minus outside, so minus minus, it becomes plus, and I'm going to remove this minus over here, and then this is very simple, this is just the ln, right? So when we scroll up a little bit, let's just copy this out, this is minus 4 cosine of x um, from 0 to pi over 3, and then plus 2 ln, ln of, of u from 0 to pi over 3. Now, what is u? We said that u was cosine of x, right? So we're just going to substitute this in. So I'm just going to erase this and then say that this is the ln of cosine of x from 0 to pi over 3. All right. So all that's left for us is to um, is to plug in our stuff, right? So let's see. This is minus minus four times cosine of pi over three is one half, right? Um, minus minus four cosine of zero, which is just one, right? Um, plus 2 ln cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, so ln of 1 half, and then minus 2 ln cosine of 0 is 1, so 2 ln 1. Um, so let's just clean this up a little bit. This is minus 4 over 2, so minus 2, and I should have done this multiplying, minus 2 plus 4 plus 2 ln of 1 half, and then minus, ln of 1 is just 0, so minus 0. So this turns into 4, oops, sorry, I meant minus 2 plus 4, so that's 2, 2 plus 2 ln of 1 half. And that is the answer. So to, let me just zoom this out so that you guys can kind of take the a full look at it. Right, so what we did here was we drew the curves, we found the the area between them, and then we saw, hey, if I just take the area from twice the area from 0 to pi over 3, this is the same thing as taking the integral from negative pi over 3 to 0, and then from 0 to pi over 3. So that makes our calculations way easier. Um, we just did the upper function minus the lower function, and then we, um, we used u substitution to integrate tangent x.